This is an interesting one, I do. Yeah? I do what? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? People ask you that all the time, right? What are you doing? What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's all about what you do. Let's start off right here. Let's see. <clears throat> when you first get into a relationship, you don't get married the day that you meet, do you? You have to get to know them a little bit. You, hopefully you don't sleep with them the same day. You, okay, we in the same building. Hopefully you guys don't. So you're not immediately intimate. You have to build something to establish the intimacy. It's the same way with Christ. Some people think that the very first day you say, we're in a relationship. It doesn't work that way with Christ. It doesn't work that way in real life. You got to get to know them and hopefully you get to know them and you find all these amazing things that you can't find anywhere else. That's what I find in Christ. You see, that's what, even though I'm a man, I'm still a bride. I know that sounds weird, but I'm still a bride. And as the bride, I get to say, what does it say on the screen? I do. What do I do? That's what it comes down to. What do you do? What do you do? Watch this. Give me Romans chapter two. Verse 13, the Bible says, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the, but the doers of the law shall be what? Man, you guys are crazy. Don't nobody keep the law anymore. That law is done away with. We don't have to, we don't have to, we still have to. Of course you do. The Bible says the doers of the law. How can you be a do? Okay, now watch this. You got to reverse engineer this. How can you be justified if the law is thrown away? If the doers of the law shall be justified. It's almost like saying no one can be justified. But that's not what God is seeking, right? Okay, now we are going to end exactly where we started. We got a, the difference between the hearers and the doers. There's an internal question in there that everyone should be asking, saying, which one am I? Which, which one am I? This, this is an identity type thing that we're going to discuss tonight. Which one am I? Am I a hearer or am I a doer? Amen. Now, I cannot answer that question for you, but I can show you this. Give me Luke chapter 6, verse 46. This is Jesus speaking. Now, you're going to notice this word do come up over and over and over and over and over again. If you've never paid attention, it's a thousand, it's, it's thousands of times throughout the entire Bible. Why? Because your faith should cause you to do something. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? That's going to be familiar right there. What does it say? Why call ye me? Man. On that day, everybody going to be saying, Lord, trying to get his attention. Lord, calling on his name. Lord, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Wow. See, it's not about, it's not about what you call yourself. It's not even about what you call him. It's about what you do. Does that make sense? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Give me verse 47. Now, everywhere in the Bible, there is a picture and a teaching. So he just gave you the teaching. That's the verbal explanation. You don't get to call me Lord if you don't do what I say. We don't have a relationship. That's why. So he begins to show you a picture now of what it's like for you to call him but not do what he says. He says, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and what? And do with them. Is hearing enough? Okay. So hearing is not enough because I, I know some kids who think that hearing is enough. They were like, yeah, I heard you. I heard you. If you heard me, then why didn't you get up and do what I said do? But I know some Christians that are just like that too. God be calling them and they say, I heard you. I heard you. And God says, if you heard me, why did you not get up and do what I said do? Because remember, we're all just children. He's the father. Okay, now watch this. And heareth my sayings and do with them. I will shew you 
to whom he is like. That means he's going to give you a picture. So he's speaking through pictures. He's already given you the teaching. Give me the next verse. Verse 48. The Bible says, He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Who's the rock? Jesus is the rock. Okay, so the one who hears it and does it is like a man who's building a house. You... What do you do with a house? You just build it and leave it? No, you live in there. You dwell there. So that means you spend time there. Okay? So he's he's like a man who built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently. What's that word mean? Vehemently. That means violently. It was it was just it was crazy, right? Like Katrina. Okay, I want you to imagine that. That's the picture. It beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. Why can't it shake it? For it was founded upon a rock. Okay, so there's going to be some storms in your life, right? Because when you meet Jesus, you don't immediately go into the kingdom where everything is cotton candy and rainbows. You're going to go through some trials and some tribulations you could have some tests because without the test you're never going to have a testimony you're going to have to go through some things so he said huh maybe you want to dig a little deeper <laughs> maybe you want to put your foundation on the rock because the flood is going to come and it's going to beat on the very place where you live it's going to beat on your house will it be able to shake it no because it will be founded on jesus no matter what comes, you're going to be like, I am still standing. Yeah, I got beat up a little bit, but I'm still here. You guys, you guys, we talk about this sometimes in Bible study. You guys know what a backslider is? Let me, let me give you the picture to go along with the teaching. You'll never forget it. Jesus is a shepherd. And what are you? Sheep. Okay, now you guys are sheep and you're walking around and some of y'all filthy. Jesus is constantly leading you to pastures, green pastures and, and clear water. But as you're walking, sometimes you're stepping in the mud. And then Jesus says to his sheep, it's time for us to go up higher. And so he's leading. And as you're going up higher, sometimes the mud that's on your hooves causes you to slide back. You're attempting to go forward and go up higher, but sometimes you're sliding back. Did you turn around and go in the opposite direction? No, because see, when you turn around and go in the opposite direction, that's not backsliding. That's reprobate. That's a different thing. So it's okay for you to backslide. I'm not giving you permission to backslide. I'm telling you, don't judge the backslider because they're still facing the right direction. They're just got, they're in so much dirt that it's causing them to slip. They're not on a firm foundation yet. I know because I've been there. Right? And if I asked you, I think almost every hand would go up in this place. We don't give up on the backsliders. Okay, now check this out. Watch. Give me the next verse. Verse 49. It says, but he that heareth and doeth not. That's like Jesus running up on you and saying, what you doing? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. You're supposed to be doing something. You took my name. You identify yourself with me. What are you, Christian? Oh, so you took my name the same way that when people get married, the husband gives his last name to the wife and she's no longer known by her old name, but she now has a new name. And it's actually the name that's above all other names. She got to do something with that, right? But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth. And against which the stream did beat vehemently. And did it take long? Immediately. See, I know Christians are like this. As soon as something happens, immediately, boom, they fall apart. Why? There's no foundation. There's no patience. There's nothing for them to say, you know what? This is the test. And on the other side of this is my testimony. Now, see, if they're not founded on the rock, it's going to fall apart instantly. It says immediately. Now, what's interesting about both of these stories is whether you are a hearer or a doer, both of them experience the flood. They experienced the rains beating vehemently, but the outcome was different. 
Does that make sense? We're not saying that it's going to be all cotton candy and rainbows. There's going to be storms for both. But how you deal with the storm, or I guess I should say what you do in the presence of your storm is going to be different. If it's not different, then you actually need to get closer to God. Like if you're sitting there in the seats right now and you're like, man, you know what? I still respond to every situation the same way I responded to it before. That's not a bad thing. It just means you need to get closer to God. See, when you get really close to him, you'll do different stuff just because you're in his presence. I want you to think about a child for something like your child may be running around crazy, just doing everything. And you come into the room and then what happened? They won't run around crazy like that. Why? Because, huh? I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm looking at you. If you get close enough, things will change. The Bible says, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Okay, what are we talking about tonight? What you going to do? There's a song by J.O. Felony. Some of y'all heard of it. Some of y'all just was born yesterday, so you don't know. But there's a song by J.O. Because they're youngsters, Jim. They don't know. But who, who remembers this? There's a song he said, I could give it to you, but what you going to do with it? I could give it to you, but what? But what? You, know, you remember that? You remember that? J.O. Felony, well, it was cracking. There's a message in that song that's amazing. Who don't want truth? Who don't want to be free? Oh, I could give it to you, but what you going to do with it? I can give it to you, but what you going to do with it? Give me Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. I want to show you this other Lord, Lord situation. And it says the same thing as what we just read. But it's another situation. The Bible says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Man, you mean I can't just call on the name of Jesus? Well, you were given the name, but what you going to do with it? Huh? Give me verse 22. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord. You know what they're about to do right now? They're about to negotiate. <laughs> That's what they're about to do. They're going to negotiate. They're going to try and negotiate their way into the kingdom. Why? Because they're going to show what it is that they did. What if God called you to do just one thing? And you did 50 things, but you didn't do that one thing that he called you to do. Does, do. Is there any glory in the 50 things that you thought of to do? No, that's all disobedience. He only called you to do one thing. And you said, Lord, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And he said, yeah, but what about that thing that I called you to do? You left that undone. This you should have done, not have left the other undone. Okay, now watch this. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? What did they do? They told people about Jesus. Okay. And in thy name have cast out devils. What did they do? They cast out devils. So they're actually doing some stuff. And in thy name done many wonderful works. What did they do? Man, they planted churches. They fed the homeless. They did all... Sounds like they're doing a whole lot. You can be doing a whole lot as a Christian and be missing that one thing that he's called you to do. Ain't that right? That one thing is going to make all the difference. You got to get in touch with the one thing that God is calling you. Who knows what it is? I got a room full of Christians right here. <sighs> Obedience. Shall I show them? Take me to, this is a precept. Give me Exodus chapter 19. I want to show you now Exodus chapter 19 is right before the Ten Commandments, right? Exodus chapter 19 and give me verse five. You'll see the one thing. How many things? They're only calling you to do one thing. That one thing will cover all things. This is God speaking. It says, now, therefore, if ye will, what does it say? Oh. That's so hard, God. I, that's so hard. I don't know. How about I just build a church? <laughs> How about I just feed people? I have money, I'll feed them. I, I want you to obey before you do anything else. 
before you do anything else. All that other stuff is great. Don't leave that undone, but you have to obey first. He says, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye will be, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. That's the agreement. This is the agreement that establishes the covenant with God, right? Um, covenant. Some of you guys are not sure about this word covenant. Covenant means an agreement. You cannot be married without an agreement. Well, I guess some people are, <laughs> and that don't usually work out too good. You're like, I thought we had an agreement. Uh, no, no, you had an agreement. Okay, now watch this jump down same thing let's find out god said obey my voice give me verse eight this is what makes us guilty verse eight and all the people answered together and said all that the lord hath spoken we will see that was the agreement what's the problem we went back on the agreement yeah numerous times we went back on the agreement. The Bible says, and Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So that's the covenant. He said, do this, I will be your God and you will be my people. And we say, yeah, everything that you said, solid. We're going to do that. But we didn't do it. And then he gave repentance the opportunity for us to what? Go back and think about it. <laughs> that's weird. Repentance is not the opportunity for you to go back and think about what you did wrong. <laughs> It's an opportunity for you to do better. Does that make sense? All right. Watch. Take me back to Matthew 7. We're in verse 23. Bible says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. This word knew has a lot of meanings, but the one that should stick with you is to be intimate with. You know, like Abraham knew his wife. <laughs> that means he was intimate with his wife. Okay. And Jesus is saying, I was never intimate with you. You got introduced to me and you thought that was the end of our relationship the day that we met. You didn't know that was just the beginning. You didn't listen. You didn't. No one seem, seems to have told you that I was going to call you to do some things. And you went out and did whatever you wanted to do. Okay, verse 24, watch what he says immediately after that. Now, me personally, I think that that's one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible because that's not talking to non-believers, is it? That's not talking to non-believers. Non-believers are not casting out devils and doing mighty, wonderful works. And pro they're not. That scripture is talking to believers. That's what makes it scary. Now, watch what he says immediately after he says therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine this is going to sound familiar and do with them <laughs> i will liken him unto a wise man which built his house sounds familiar right sounds like we read that before but it makes more sense now that we put it in the context that christ is calling you to do the will of his father which is in heaven I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Give me verse 25. And the rain descended. Hmm. And the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. Why did it not fall? We already know the answer. For it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and do with them not. What is the one thing that these two people have in common? Let's see if I'm, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to tell them, Jim. They both heard the word. They both heard the word. What's the difference between these two people? One of them did something with what they received. That's the difference between them. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and do with them not shall be likened unto a foolish man <laughs> which built his house upon the sand anybody here ever build a sand castle and think it's gonna last it don't even last until you leave the beach before you can even get to your car it's already destroyed all right verse 27 and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it i have one last scripture for you tonight Hopefully you guys realize, those of you who are the bride, men included, 
those of you who are the bride of Christ, when you say, I do, I want you to hear my voice saying, what? What? When you wake up tomorrow and God calls you to do something, he says, I want you to do this. What? What do you do? What do you do because you love him? What do you do because of your relationship? Have you guys ever heard of this word in the Bible? It's, it's very interesting. It's um, charity. Charity? That's not you giving out your money to the poor. It's not. That's not that. Like when we're reading 1 Corinthians and it talks about charity. Charity is the action that love produces. And if your idea of love doesn't produce any action, then it's probably not even love. Does that make sense? Okay. One last scripture because we started and he said something and we're going to close it out. Give me James chapter 1 verse 22. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Who gets deceived if all I do is hear a good word? I come in on Sunday. I come on Friday, Eddie. Sometimes I come on Wednesday and all I do is hear a good word. I don't do nothing with it. I don't share it at home. I don't post it on Facebook. I don't tell the homies about it. I don't do nothing. Man, I'm. I, all I do is hear the word. I, who gets deceived? I'm deceived if I think that hearing is enough. Does that make sense? Amen. That's the word that I have for you guys tonight.